Today we have a 2002 Chrysler PT Cruiser and we are having some power steering issues with it. Um, we're getting the classic power steering pump whine when you turn it hard to the left or right. Um, so we're going to check it out and see what's wrong with it. Um, the first thing you want to do is to check your power steering fluid because most likely if it's if it's low that could cause the same issue and that's in the easiest fix. So we'll go ahead and unscrew your power steering power steering cap here and check your fluid. Okay, we took the cap out and it is completely, the dipstick here is completely dry. We look down in there, we can see a little bit of fluid in the bottom, so it's not completely empty. But the thing about a power steering system is it's completely closed. It's completely encased and it circulates within itself. Just like the transmission, there's no consumption of fluid or anything. So if you fill it up, it should stay filled up. The only reason it should drop is when you have a leak. So somewhere in the system we have a leak. Um, we can look around our hoses, um, down around our pump and see if we have any fluid dripping out. We can look on the ground, back around the, the rack and pinion back there, see if we have any uh, fluid missing out or dripping. Um, this is actually just standard um, ATF plus four transmission fluid. That it uses in here so it's not too expensive to replace but uh, if you have to keep refilling it it can get kind of expensive so we're gonna find this leak and fix this problem okay that right on the uh, left side right there that's the um, right here is the uh, power steering pump it's bolted onto the engine right there there's a long that long hose coming out the bottom or that's not a hose the pipe right there coming out the bottom is the uh, pressure line and then we have the return hose coming up. That's not the return hose. The return hose is right here. And it doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be any leaks around or under any of those components. When we look under the car though, we do see some fluid dripping out onto the ground. So we have a leak for sure. And the leak is towards the front of the car. So we're pretty sure it's not the rack and pinion. We suspect that it may be the pressure line hose right there. It's going straight across the screen. But we're going to, so we're going to turn the car on and see if we can spot a leak. So as you see in the video, we definitely have a leak in the hose. Sorry, I had to turn it the other way to get it to stand up so I could go and turn the wheel. But yeah, it would only leak when I turned the wheel sharp to the right, sharp to the left. So I went ahead and got a replacement hose and some more transmission fluid that we're going to use for the power steering. And it came with a bunch of brackets and stuff and obviously the hose itself. This actually cost about the same as replacing the power steering pump itself, about $40, $45. So... Either way you go, you're going to spend some money if you're going to replace the pump or this hose. The return hose isn't too bad. That's probably around $12, 12 or $15. And then if you have to replace the rack and pinion, good luck with that. But for this one, we're going to replace the uh, just the pressure hose. The first thing we're going to do is jack up the car and get underneath there and see if we can take this thing off. Okay, now we're under the car. This is the uh, pressure line for your power steering comes down goes underneath the oil pan there goes up into there turns it goes right into there it's behind that uh the other hose see go right up in behind the other one that one is going to be tough to get to might have to get that one from the top but we'll try to get from the bottom I'll tell you how well that works. And as for the front, where it goes into the pump, we're going to have to take some of the grill and stuff apart because there's not enough room to get my hand on in there to take out that side. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, and in order to take off the grill part, which is this plastic piece, there's two bolts on each side, right here, right here, right here, right here. Take those out and this grill piece just pops right off. Set that aside. And then next we're gonna take apart or take off this uh, the radiator su support on top. And 
you're going to need to unbolt this bolt here, that one, and that one, and three more on this side. One, two, actually, and three. I don't know why that one's different, but it is. You have to take those Okay, we took out all these bolts. They were 10 millimeter. The next one, we're gonna take out this middle one right here, which holds our ambient temperature sensor on, and it, again, is a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and take that Okay, off. with that nut off, we take the ambient temperature sensor off, and then we have another uh, bolt behind it, and that's a uh, 12 millimeter? 13 millimeter, sorry. Yes, 13 millimeter. You're gonna need a deep wall for this one because it sticks out a little bit. So you can go ahead and take that one out. Okay, and with those out, you can go ahead and take off your uh, seal here for your hood. And this just pops right out. And it's still attached to the car, so don't move it too far. It's attached by that uh, the hood release cable. But with that out of the way now, we can move our radiator up a little bit. And give us some more room to get down in there to get to our um, pump there. Okay, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to move the um, radiator out of the way enough in order to get in there to get that off. So, looks like we're going to have to end up uh, taking the radiator out. So, I went ahead and I'm draining it right now and I pulled off the top hose here. And in order to separate the radiator from the air conditioner condenser here, there are three bolts on this side. If I get flashed on here. There's one right here, and there's two more farther down, one in the middle and one towards the bottom. And then there's two on the driver's side, same position right there. And those are 10 millimeters, so if you take all three of, or all five of those out, your radiator will separate from your air conditioner condenser, and then we can take it out. Okay, and I forgot to mention that uh, you also have to unclamp the lower radiator hose down there and detach the uh, fan the uh, I don't know where it's down here the uh, radiator fan collection uh, connection um, and then you just kind of lift it right out I got it out all in one piece with the fan all attached and everything so now we have enough room to get down in here and you can't see it but I'll get a closer picture and unscrew the uh, the line on this end Okay, we're able to loosen up that end, but we still can't unscrew it by hand, so we're going to have to bend our pipe a little bit here, this one here, in order to get some more room up in there. In order to give you a little bit more room with that, you have to unscrew this one up here, this bolt, which holds on this part, um, and that is a 15 millimeter. So if you unscrew that, you can move this around and get some more room in there. Okay, took some maneuvering with our tools, but... We managed to get it unscrewed and disconnected there. Um, we have a catch pan underneath to catch all that. Uh, it's actually transmission fluid drain out of there for the power steering. And that was 18 millimeter. Um, our replacement is 16 millimeter. So when we're trying to get a 16 millimeter on there, obviously it wouldn't fit. But uh, we're, we're hoping that's going to be the same size and fit up in there. So we'll let you know. So next we are going to do the other side, which is near the steering column on the um, rack and pinion. And so I'll show you that next. All right, now we're under the car. We're actually back further than the, um, the uh, rack and pinion. We're actually back towards the catalytic converter, but this will be the easiest way to get up in here. Um, that top one right there is the one we're gonna take off. All right, and then once you get that off that side there's two bolts you need to take out of there under the car on the oil pan they are 15 millimeter there's one there and one back there I get it right there and once you get those two out you can just pull the hose right out we went ahead and put the new hose in it came with the new um, clamps here to hold it on um, and actually, in order to get the the end off of the old one, where it went into the uh, rack and pinion, we had to cut it and then put a socket on there because it was rusted on. So you may have to do that to yours, but 
getting the new one on wasn't any big problem. Um, okay, then of course once you get it all together, you're going to have to bleed all that air out of the system. And you do that by filling up your reservoir here full of uh, the power steering or the transmission fluid. Um, and then before you start the engine, you turn the steering wheel far left, far right. I did it five times just to get it in there nice and good. <clears throat> and then start the engine and continue the process of going left to right until it, the uh, pump quiets down and there's no more air bubbles coming out of your your fluid. It may seem like f foamy, that's, that's the air coming out. So you just keep doing it until all that foam is gone and then you're good to go. Thanks for watching.